Hello, everybody, and welcome back. The Fab Four have made it together again. It was such a huge success that I had so many people that were like, you guys have to get back together again. So ladies, welcome back for take two. We're so happy to be here. Thanks for having us, Amy. <laughs> oh, you all are so funny. Okay, so this time I thought we would change it up. Last time we just kind of followed the conversation wherever. This time I figured I would ask some questions and we will all take turns answering. And then you guys out there in the YouTube's land will get to see four different answers from four of your favorite people ever. And you can kind of get a little sneak peek behind the scenes. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna read the question. Janet's gonna answer first, then Neely, then Lindsay, then me, cause we're gonna go counterclockwise and Lindsay, you're gonna have to practice your patience today. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing, my answers no. are all zip, zip, zip. <laughs> Wait until your question. <laughs> But I have a prediction. I have a prediction that we're going to make it through about three questions. Before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh, what we're taking do. bets. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Y'all, before you even watch any further down below in the comments, you need to put how many questions you think we're going to get through in this episode. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 questions to get through. Oh, yeah. do when you were reading us I the think questions earlier, I was like, there's no way. There's no way. I don't think so either, <laughs> three honestly. Three hours. <laughs> That's why yeah. I had so many to pick from. And I figure we'll see how many we can get through. So see, Lindsay and I are like, oh no, we're going to get through all 10 in a bonus. And you guys are like three. Yeah. I give it five. Some I believe it's five. Yeah. We're realistic over here. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us are ambitious. Right. We haven't even started yet. <laughs> That's not indicative of how this is going to go. I don't know what is. <laughs> see? And Lindsay's on a bouncy ball. I am. I'm sorry. I can't not. Don't, don't, don't be sorry. We love you just the way you are. Keep bouncing, girl. It's okay. <laughs> can't not. Okay. I'm going to start That's with the questions. So remember, Janet, Neely, then Lindsay, then Amy. Is that even alphabetical? I don't know what the system is here. You want me to take, <laughs> well, in the thumbnail, y'all will see where, you know, everyone lays on my screen. So I'm going counterclockwise and I didn't even start with myself. So. Well, you can't, you're the curator of questions. You have to go last, that's the rule. <laughs> I okay. swear, I'm I think done. Neely's okay. right. I think three, three questions probably is about it. <laughs> yeah. It's all Lindsay's fault. Ready, go. Ready, go. First question, Janet, yes. how long have you been on your journey? I have been on my keto journey for over three years. It's been about three and a half years that I have, since I started keto, my weight loss journey started when I was like 20 years old. <laughs> yes, we could, you know, like qualify that your keto journey and then your weight loss journey. Yeah, literally. Okay. So yeah. we have three and 20. Okay. Neely, what about you? <laughs> so it gets, it's so messy and muddy because I started the Atkins diet when I was 19 and I did that for a while. And then I went, you know, all kinds of other things. So, I mean, I could say 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on this journey, but, um, as far as like the way I'm eating right now, um, it's when I kind of started experimenting with carnivore about three to four years ago. So, but it, it doesn't feel right. Like saying it's only a three or four year journey when it's just, it's like a lifelong thing. Yeah. So again, three and 20, I mean, you know, yep. pretty yep. fair. Okay. Okay. Lindsay. Okay. So for me, I have a messy experience similar to Neely and we talk about how our, our things have lined up over the past, however many years I started off with uh West today price about 10 years ago that no, probably more like 2011 ish. So I don't know, 11 ish years and then full blown like keto and then sort of morphing back and forth through pregnancy and all that kind of stuff. I started that in 2016. So I don't know, I, I guess between, I don't know, a few and six years of the keto situation. I don't know. Oh, wow. It's messy. It's messy. Yeah. It's messy. Okay. Then I'm the baby. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've been on this low carb lifestyle for three and a half years. 
And before that, I mean, I, I kind of half-heartedly tried some things that I didn't really care, which is probably why I got up to 275 pounds. Um, but yeah, I, I think my first real diet wasn't until I was like 25. So maybe I didn't know that that was your highest weight. I didn't yeah. know that your highest weight was 275. That's another good question. What was your highest weight? Okay. Next so question. Bonus question. Your highest weight. <laughs> bonus question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One Janet, so closer to 11. I already did my answer. So there we go. I went first on that one. Oh, so we should go backwards. Okay. Then Lindsay, you okay. get to be second. What was your highest weight, Lindsay? Uh, it was right after Jared and I got married and I think I was about, no, I'm sorry. It was when I was pregnant with Lauren and I was 189. Oh, wow. I'm very I short. Was, I'm very hmm. short. How tall are you, Lindsay? Um, I'm almost five foot three now. Bonus <laughs> question number two. How tall are you? I can't believe I'm taller than you. <laughs> You're growing. I used to be five four. I used to be, and then I've shrunk over shrunk. the years. Yeah, I'm I'm like five four and a half to five yeah. five. But okay, and then your highest I'm weight, going, Neely. My highest weight um, was I was probably around one ninety to two hundred pounds, and it was when I was in high school, um, and I didn't weigh myself often, and so I could have been pushing two hundred. Um, but I, yeah, didn't have access to a scale, nor did I care to get on a scale. Um, yeah. And I've always, every, pregn every pregnancy I've had, I get up to about 180 to 185. And it made me so happy every time that like at nine months pregnant, I was still lower than my highest weight <laughs> when I was, sure. you know, like 18. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. Janet. All right. Both Mine questions. was... 240 pounds and that was it's actually before I did carb cycling so I did carb cycling years ago that was my highest weight I quit that gained weight back and then when I restarted at keto I got back up to 240 pounds again because it was like it was a roller coaster for the last 25 years before I started keto so so 240 pounds and then how tall are you? Did you already answer that? Oh, no, I'm five, five, almost five, six. Okay. So not only am I the baby, but I'm also the giant. <laughs> are you? I'm going to be in the runt. I'm five, eight. <laughs> oh, are oh. you? Which is it's so funny point? on YouTube where you like, don't have a concept of how tall people are. I was going to say, you. Fe I feel like you were short, like, you know, like <laughs> Lindsay midget size. Is that a compliment? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Love you, Lizzie. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll tell my really quick story though. Um, okay. I, I was always 5'8 growing up. Like I was 5'8 in my sophomore year, I think. And I've always been 5'8 after that. Then after I got married and I had several kids, I had a severe vitamin D deficiency and I'm pretty sure I have celiac disease. I just never stayed on the food long enough to get tested. So I said, forget that. Um, I lost two inches in six months and I went down to five, six. And I went into the doctor one time. I, I had so many symptoms, night sweats and hot flashes. I mean, you name it, it was horrible. And I went in to figure out what was wrong. And they took my height and they were like, okay, five, six. And I said, I'm sorry, what? And they were like five, six. And I said, that's not right. I said, I'm five, eight. And she looked at me and she goes, oh, honey, she goes, no, you're five, six. So we did it again. And then she went in and looked in my records and this was on the military base. So my records went back a long time and she goes, oh, um, no, you're right. So I ended up getting bone scans. I got body density scan. I mean, like I got the whole gambit. They couldn't figure out what it was. Crazy. I went gluten-free and started kind of growing again. And then I went keto carnivore and I gained all of my inches back. That's and I'm crazy. 41. So that, oh, there we go. There's a bonus question. Number three, how old are you? I'm 41 and it is possible <laughs> to grow when you are in your forties. So there's that Janet, how old are you? <laughs> I am 45. I think I'm the oldest, I think out of us four. And Neely. I will be 38 in a week and a half. Oh, so you're the baby. The baby. Yeah. Well, so Lindsay, Lindsay, you're my mom. Right? Yep. <laughs> yep. Our birthdays are very close together. Oh, I are like the same. 
Except she's the extrovert and I'm the introvert. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Uh, we're not going to talk about the video, but the thumbnail of the video that I just put up with Lindsay, I had so much fun making that thumbnail because I did the iodine cool. on the periodic table and then I did Lindsay's and my ages. And I was like, should I, should I like create new numbers for us that we're now on the periodic table and like the one twenties or one thirties. And I was like, no, I'll just do our ages. Cause she about her <laughs> age. That was so cool. <laughs> so that was Very cool. Crazy. I did see that thumbnail. Haven't watched it yet though. It, that's, it was so much, there was so much science. Like we geeked out on it. Oh, and a little bit, just, just like this much. Just so y'all know, I did post it. Um, I sent it to one of the ladies in the iodine workshop, uh, the, the admin that I had been talking to. And she came back and she said, fantastic video. Thank you so much for oh doing the God. research. And, but I was like, oh, yes, we did it right. <laughs> so Good for you guys. Well, I mean, uh -huh. if we didn't, what's the harm? Because we would have been like, well, that went poorly. I guess that's wrong. Let's do it again. <laughs> and we were very clear. This is our understanding that we could be totally wrong. Right? So it's okay. That's true. Okay, <laughs> question yeah, I number. I that all the time. I could be totally wrong. Yeah. 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 Just keep that That's in like mind. One of my favorite phrases. Yeah. yeah. It could be wrong. But it could be wrong. It totally could be. Okay. So now question, official question number two. <laughs> <laughs> Neely might be right. Um, yeah. Okay. So what we'll start with Lindsay. I'm going to let you go first because apparently you need to talk. <laughs> you can't even make can't it through right. one it question. I say, Lindsay, right. just go first. Just go first, Lindsay. We get it. Okay. So, Lindsay, <laughs> what is your favorite part of your journey? Okay. First of all, I would like to use my time to clarify. We have already <laughs> answered four questions. Therefore, <laughs> the timer is going out. <laughs> um, and the favorite part of my journey? Ugh. I hate the word journey, first of all, personally. Like, it's one of those, like, words for me personally. <gasps> and I've used it in the past. I prefer the word quest because I don't exactly know where I'm going. It's even um, better. And I use the word adventure a lot because like there's ups, there's downs, you just don't even know. Mm -hmm. So, and that's just a personal thing. Like everybody else can use the word journey, but for, for my brain, I'm like, it's a quest. It is a quest. <laughs> um, and I find that with a lot of words for me. So it's, it's a Lindsay thing. It's not an everybody in the world must conform to Lindsay's brain thing. Um, anyway, my favorite part of this has just been the adaptability of my body to go from one state to a completely different state. And just the knowledge that comes with, with my body, like learning how to adapt to be a healthier version of me. I love it. I'm going to start calling it a quest now. You've rubbed yeah. off on me. Okay. Yeah. And it's like the quest implies that we're still looking which I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not there yet. Have you all yeah. seen the movie Onward where they're on the quest yeah. and they have to go like the path I of peril? Love... I have mm -hmm. not seen that movie. The path it's of so peril. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you have your homework, Jenny. You need to go watch Onward. And Lindsay, so much homework. Your, your turn. What's your favorite part of your quest? Lindsay or me? Oh no, Neely. The other <laughs> one. <laughs> Lindsay can go again. She could take my time. <laughs> She's got a good answer for you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's probably the same. No, um, no, it's going to so be meeting, meeting all of us on the YouTubes. No, I'm just on the YouTube. Oh, <laughs> that's seriously, that's a big one. Seriously. Um, I think for me, it's the mental health or um, the emotional growth. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, she froze. Oh, do oh. You me? There you go. You're on froze now. My magic powers worked. Oh, sweet. Whew. Um, okay. So let's start over. So for me, I think it's probably the, um, the emotional health I have gained through, um, both working on myself, like with a self-discipline and all those aspects, but then also finding out what works for my body mm -hmm. so that it's like, I don't have to fight a losing battle, <laughs> like yeah. trying to eat a diet that's bad for you and live, you so hard. <laughs> and when you get like the food or when I have gotten the food figured out, it like just mm -hmm. opens up my brain to actually be productive and to have, you know, healthy emotions and to express myself. And so kind of like, I guess my own 
blossoming through the diet um, and wellness journey has been my favorite part. Okay. I love that answer. Okay. Janet, not Lindsay. <laughs> um, I would have to say for myself through my whole entire journey over the last, you know, 25 years of weight loss and the battle of weight loss would probably be learning more mentally about myself. I've never struggled with mental health before, but like I, I explained in a lot of my recent videos, the struggle and the like triggers that kind of trigger my mental health, which then in turn gears towards my food, right? So like if something major happens in my life, I, I turn to food and I never really put two and two together with that previously in the last 20 years and definitely being on keto as well, which I also mentioned in my videos is it just brings so much clarity to my mental health, being on keto and eating you know, a ketogenic lifestyle, that that's probably one thing that I realized through this whole entire journey. And that has been very beneficial. And one of my favorite parts is learning and coping with mental health and triggers with what you eat and, you know, what's right, what's wrong for me <laughs> and what works for me in my mental health and the triggers that I have learned along the way, which I don't know everything as of yet, but that's one thing that I think has been fascinating in my journey. And it's just been amazing learning that part of it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I love that answer too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my <clears throat> coffee, uh, <laughs> my favorite part would honestly have to be discovering my own strength and that I am worth it because I've spent literally my entire life believing that I wasn't worth it. I wasn't worth the effort of going to the doctor. I wasn't worth the effort of trying to educate me. I wasn't worth the effort of even being married to or being a mother because I always felt that I screwed up so much. And now since I've changed the way that I eat and I begin my quest, <laughs> I have discovered that I am worth it. That even though I make mistakes, I am an incredible person and that I have incredible strength inside of me that I never knew existed. I still struggle to this day to think that I am worth it. There's sometimes like Richard told me, start a YouTube channel. And I was like, that is the dumbest thing ever. No one's going to listen to me. I'm not worth it. And I finally did it. And guess what? I am worth it. And Everybody is worth it. You really are worth it. You could be bedridden and you could be what you think is the worst mother in the world or anything. You really are worth it if you just try mm -hmm. and you will find an inner strength that you never knew existed. So that was my favorite part to find out. I really am worth it. Uh, that was kind of eye opening. Thank you. I didn't yeah, cry. I lo you love that. That and is deep, Amy. I love that. Even with my kid coming out here in the middle of it, you yeah. all see that part in the bloopers. <laughs> um, so then conversely, what has been the worst part on this journey quest path, Janet? Oh, geez. <laughs> I thought it was Lindsay. I thought Lindsay was going first through all of this. No, we're playing the go around, go around. Although go I'm going to skip across here in a minute. And actually, you know what? Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let me change it I up. Don't wanna Neely. <laughs> See, she knew what was coming. She was I, like, I was oh really God, happy no. with how this was working out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now I have to think about it. Okay. Um, the worst part. That's good that we actually have to think about the worst part, though. I think that's really yeah. neat. That says something, though. If we really have to think about it, I feel the same way. Like, I actually do have to think about the worst, even though you know, I think for all of us, there's been so many up and downs. And like I've said, like the highs are really high and the lows are like really, really low, but for us to actually have to sit and think about like, what is the worst part? And we all have to think about it. I think that's a good, a good thing. You know, I think for me, the worst part would be, um, I'm the kind of person that 
if there's something that I see that I need to do or that I want to do, I just put my head down and I make it happen and I get it done. Like having things undone bugs me. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. just can't. Oh no. I've been on it for 20 years. Oh, can I fixed you. Did You're I, good. Did I freeze? Yeah, you oh, did, but I fixed it. <laughs> okay. All right. What can we how much do? Did I... <laughs> oh, okay. So on a on a health journey like this, you can't just, well, I'll say I can't just put my head down and just make it happen and get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. It, It's like, I'll think I'm going the right direction and find out I'm not, or, you know, it's like with through these 20 years of trial and error and doing things, it's like, it's, it's messy, like we already mm -hmm. said. And um, that's frustrating for me because I just, like, I just want to get it done. And that's part of the reason that I stopped sharing about health and nutrition and diet and wellness for so long on my YouTube channel. Cause I stop saying anything until I get this figured out. <laughs> yep, I didn't freeze today. Okay. Yes, you did. Um, I mean, sure. so good. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways. So I, I stopped sharing for a while because I was like, I just need to get this figured out before I come back and say something. Cause I, I felt like it was just, you know, <laughs> wishy-washy. <laughs> Are you okay, Lindsay? It's your, your internet keeps freezing. You might have to keep people <laughs> offline. It cuts out oh, no. at the same it's the point. Best of point. Your yeah. conversation. We're like wisdom nugget. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, must, it must be God saying that I'm not supposed to say that. But it was so good. Okay, well, well, anyways, <laughs> I, I, I want to be able to just do something and get to the finish line and it be done. And mm. like, figure out what my body needs and do it and you just can't do that and I have not been able to do that and that's frustrating yeah you know. totally agree okay Lindsay yeah. your turn so Janet can keep thinking yay okay I thought of a few things so first of all going through and explaining myself to others whenever I'm doing something different that's not necessarily the worst part because I do love to go head to head with people and have debates and things like that but the, the incessant, constant, well, but you're doing it wrong. I'm like, oh, okay, I am doing it wrong, 100%, let's go. Um, so <laughs> that gets a little bit wearisome. And then um, there was something else. Oh, snap, I forgot. Uh, there was something else though. And it was, it was sort of kind of like, oh, I got it. It was the hey. fact that- I helped you, I helped you remember. No, I forgot again. <laughs> I'm kind of like a, like I skip around on ideas all the time and I get excited about a variety of ideas all at the same time. And I kind of get a little bit hypomanic about the things. Um, not a diagnosis, not a diagnosis, but you know, like my actions are very much so like all over the map and it's hard for me to buckle down and focus. So there's, there's an opposite situation there for you, Neely. I, I struggle to focus often, but I have all the energy to do all the things. I just don't have any like parameters. Like I need, I need like the bowling lane to help me out here. Um, as opposed to just like being free form on a soccer field, you know? Um, so those two pieces seem to be a little bit irritating. And also the, the idea that, oh, I found this different ingredient to use. And then it winds up flopping for me specifically. Like it makes me feel like garbage or whatever the case may be. And it's like, I wish I wouldn't have spent that money, but I guess. <laughs> I think we all feel that sometimes with ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Okay. Janet, how about you? What is the worst part? Okay, so the worst part for me is probably like I'm very much like Neely, like I am one lane, like I like to focus on something and just be done with it. And that's probably one of mine as well, because I have mentioned like, I wish that I could just be at my goal weight and stay there. 
Mm. And that is the hardest thing throughout this whole journey. And that I'm realizing 25 years with the whole weight loss thing for me is that I will never just stay there. I will never stay there. And that's the, the reality that I have to face. And the most frustrating thing where it's like, I will never stay at that goal weight. I will gain, I will lose, I will gain. It, it's constantly going to be a thing for me. And that's just the realization unfortunately that I've come to, because I like to just get it done. I like to do the work, get it done, stay there and be done and focus on that. And, um, it, it just doesn't work like that for weight loss whatsoever. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah. So I was going to say each one of those things and y'all stole my thing. So I'm going to add a new thing now, which isn't really <laughs> my least favorite part. You know, like the worst part. Cause I think you guys really covered all the rest of them. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it a little bit further. The worst part is the last next worst part is being judged mm -hmm. because we are oh, I couldn't care less about that. <laughs> well, because that's because you're, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. No, it's because I have no self-awareness, <laughs> no self -awareness. but I love when people try to put me in a box and they tell mm -hmm. me that I'm not doing it right because I'm supposed to be a carnivore. It's like, um, but I'm not, I'm the angel in carnivores, angel, not the carnivore. And I think that that is the worst part. And a lot of this for a lot of people is the labels. And the boxes that people are put into because of those labels, a lot of people are coming out and saying, I'm not keto. I'm an Amy for because I'm tired of being told I'm doing it wrong. So if I'm going to come up with my own way of doing it, you can't tell me that I'm doing it wrong. So, and I think seeing in this space, how much division there is, that was a little disheartening mm. because health is the goal. And one size does not fit all. And you can't just take it off the shelf and it looks great on paper, but it doesn't work for everybody. So I think that was probably one of the saddest parts was seeing the division in this space by people who say you're not doing it right. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be one of those things that is a life lifetime struggle because there's always people that are going to say, you know, you need carbs, you need carbs, you know, you, you need to eat like plant-based, you need to eat only meat. There's always going to be somebody that is being judged on what you are doing and how you are eating, which I don't understand because everybody is different in this world. And I'm just one that I, I can't have carbs. I would love to, I would love to eat friggin' 200 carbs a day. Don't get me wrong, but my body just isn't made for that you know, unfortunately, and that's what I think other people don't understand, you know, when they are judging the keto diet, the carnivore diet or whatever is they just don't understand how every body is different. Exactly. So I think understanding is the thing that is lacking the most understanding and grace. So if we all could work on that, everyone who's watching as well, if we could all could work on understanding and grace for other people. I think that this space would be even better. What Lindsay, what work, 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 <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Lindsay is, is no work. I'll play. Uh, so, so little miss all, all play and no work. Um, what do you wish you'd done differently? No, I got you. I can't believe I stumped you. You always have an answer. I'm debating on how to word the words. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> wording the words is hard. So I would argue that I, anything that I wish I would have done differently, I have every opportunity to change now because I'm not, as you said, in a box. Yeah. I'm able to adapt. And that goes back to my like ability to adapt. Like that is huge for me. Flexibility is a big part of our lives with the way that, you know, we move frequently or my husband's job works or whatever the case may be, I have become a very adaptable and flexible person. So it's like, oh, I did something that I wish would be different. Oh wait, there's now, I can change it now. And so to me, it, it, it's kind of hard to say like, I wish I would have done this thing differently because I don't know that I would be able to be as flexible now if I wouldn't have gone through those things in the past. Good answer. 
Yeah, that is a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Neely, go ahead. We'll see how many times you pause. I'll unpause you though. Don't worry. Okay. Sounds good. Um, for me, I think what I wish I'd done differently um, is eat more protein the whole time. Mm. But same as Lindsay. Am I there? Okay, now you're back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but like Lindsay said, what I what I did, everything that I did throughout, you know, my whole journey has led me to where I am now. So it's like I can't just go back and change something. It would it's like time travel. You change yes. Sure, and you can't. So I wouldn't change anything. Even better answer. Okay, Janet, your turn. I <laughs> I would definitely one hundred percent number one regret or what I would have changed is doing like the cabbage soup diet <laughs> and doing all these freaking diets that are so ridiculous. That is one thing that I would have changed. I definitely could have gone without doing that cabbage soup diet and, you know, all of these radical diets that I've done that I expected to lose like 50 pounds in five days. That is definitely number one. <laughs> oh my gosh. 50 pounds in five days. Please. No, <laughs> that's logic. Like, yeah. No, anybody. Totally possible. No, oh my gosh, ridiculous. We're, that goes completely against, you know, physics <laughs> even, oh, yeah. but that's okay. So for me, I, I agree with Neely. I don't want to change anything. If I could change something, I wish I would have found this way of eating when I was like 15, mm -hmm. but then I wouldn't have had a story to share and I wouldn't be here on YouTube for everyone to see me struggle and see me figure out my own health and encourage them to do the same for themselves. And I think that's probably the takeaway is shoulda, coulda, woulda, you can't go back. You can only go forward. So like Lindsay said, doesn't matter. doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter where you came from, what happened in your past, how oxalate damaged you are because you did keto the wrong way or the cabbage soup diet. It doesn't matter. We're going to move forward from here forward and just forget about it. It's a learning, a stepping stone, and it's done. Well, it's as simple as no better, do better. Yeah. Absolutely. And I feel like viewers that are watching expect it to be like this journey that happens with eight, eight months of being on keto. And, you know, it's our experiences, all four of us that we have had with all of the diets that we've tried in the past that has led us to where we are today. And like I said, that, that is over 20 years of, you know, dieting and trying to find this, this lifestyle of eating. And it just doesn't happen within five months or a year, you know, it flows all nice and it's just rainbows and butterflies for the whole entire time. And you just end up at your goal weight and that is it. You're, you're there. It doesn't happen that way. And so that's definitely one thing for viewers to take from this is that through all of our experiences that we've had over, you know, 10, 20 years that it's brought us to this space today. Right. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go into some simple, not so deep questions. What question are we on? <laughs> round. Okay. Number seven. What? I know. Right. And that's even with three bonus questions in there. How did we get to number seven already? Oh yeah. Because we're the fab four. That's how well, Lindsay just wants to know if she's going to win and we do all the questions. Cause she, yeah, she's competitive. <laughs> You're not wrong, Janet. Yeah. Not wrong. <laughs> not even a little bit. Okay. So th this is like, honestly could be like the lightning round because it's, they're very easy to answer. Okay. So Janet, do you record with your phone? Or with a camera? I started out filming with my phone. And then in December, about a year, year and a half ago, I got a camera for Christmas. And now I record on a camera. Okay. What camera is it? Um, it is the Canon G7X. Okay. That really? is what I record. And it has a, a flippy thing where you, I can see myself. I can see very, myself. very handy. So that is what I record with. 
Perfect. Neely, your turn. Okay. So I use my phone primarily, um, but I've gone through different periods of using a camera. I have a Canon e, EOS, e, no, I don't remember it. ADD. That's an ADD, EOS ADD. <laughs> it's a fancy camera, but you know, it's big. So it's not as easy to um, lug around the kitchen and stuff. It's definitely not something I take when I do Costco grocery hauls or anything like that. Um, so right now, primarily on my phone, but I do have the camera for fancier shooting. What kind of phone is it? It's a Pixel 6 Pro. So it's got a pretty nice camera. I was going to say that it's got a really nice camera. I've noticed yeah. your videos. I was like, I bet she uses a camera or yeah, but no, apparently. yeah, I would have never guessed. Cause yeah, even your thumbnails and everything really good quality. Thank you. Yeah. So good job. <laughs> That's why she has a hundred thousand subscribers because she uses hey, exactly. Phone. You have to be good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lindsay, what about you? Camera or phone? Yes. <laughs> of course. Overachiever. <laughs> so I, I stream on my phone. I started recording with the Nikon D3100 back in the day that does not have a flip out screen viewfinder. And that was really difficult. So that um, led to the purchase of my M50. And then I do also have the Canon G7X Mark II. And then I also will sometimes do stuff on my GoPro. Um, and I have not added any drone footage yet, but um, hey, I do. <laughs> There's no real application for a drone in a cooking channel yet. <laughs> but Challenge. my husband and I, we're obsessed with sailing videos. And he was like, if we buy a boat, would you rather have a, a GoPro to do underwater stuff or a drone to do aerial shots? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's a good time. It's a good time. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Okay, so I'm... <laughs> definitely archaic here um my husband bought me an amazing camera it's a uh, uh the lumex s5 Ooh. with like even like the big filter that goes on the front and the everything hmm. my little lights underneath my kitchen counters are really cheap leds and no matter what i do i cannot get rid of the roll it doesn't matter what I have my camera set to, it will not stop. Ugh. Number two, I have really, really crappy internet. So when I film these amazing videos on my camera, the file is huge. And it literally took eight hours to upload several of them. I can't do that. So then I can't have my lights on in my kitchen. Uh, so now I just kind of stick with my, my iPhone 11. <laughs> That's all right. It's, it's, really, still, it's good quality though, honestly. Did you not upgrade your internet or are you still looking into that? <sighs> They're supposed to be running fiber optics starting yeah. this month. Okay. So everyone say a prayer that they start with me. Yeah. Exactly. I actually need to call them because yesterday, two days ago, uh, it took five hours to upload Lindsay's video. Oh and it was only oh like God. four gigs. It was only four gigs and it took five hours to, to upload. And the internet crashed three times trying to do it. I almost had to drive to the library at eight o'clock at night to upload it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank goodness I didn't. And yet, yeah, we'll get there. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So, oh, that was that one. I get to click that one off. Um, do you, Neely, always stay on plan? Oh no, is she frozen already? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. It was like apparently the there. bathroom up here does not have great Wi-Fi. <laughs> apparently not. It looks nice, but it's not working out as well as I hoped. <laughs> um, well, yes, because my plan is whatever I want to eat at any given moment. So yes. <laughs> yep. Good answer. The answer couldn't be any better than that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Don't we all? <laughs> okay, Lindsay, do you always stay on plan? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> A less perfect answer, but the answer is no. <laughs> um, I 
talked a lot on my channel recently about going to Scotland and in Scotland it is borderline impossible to eat yeah. a keto vor way of eating or a heavy protein low carb way over there um and I fully embraced the experience instead of making myself crazy yeah so there's that but if I'm just at home I would argue 99.9% .9 of the time I'm eating the way that makes me feel the best which is that high protein low carb moderate tish high fat perfect thank you Janet your turn um I would say no <laughs> as you know some of my latest videos have shown um definitely right now is a is a struggle time for me and you know I think that's just one thing that if you always think that you're going to be eating however you eat keto carnivore every single day of your life and every meal I think that's unrealistic that's just my opinion but um definitely definitely no <laughs> short answer is is no I I chose um, my recent trip to Banff, I chose to eat off plan because, you know, my daughter has these things like the cannoli that she, you know, would FaceTime me and say, oh my gosh, mom, I just had the best cannoli. You have to try it when you come down. I go to Banff to visit her, you know, three or four times a year. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay, Lindsay? She says, keep, finish. Going. keep it going, finish. But keep talking. Okay. Come back to it. <laughs> And those were kind of the experiences that I wanted to have with her when I was there. So I chose, it was like Neely said, that was part of my plan that day was to eat off plan to experience those experiences that she has and that she enjoyed food wise. So, so. Okay, Lindsay, go ahead. Lindsay, go okay. Ahead. So here's what you do here, not what you do. Here's the thought that just struck the brain. And this is why, you know, we're all over the place yes. and white wrap deep yes. fried and then with the cannoli oh yes i haven't that done it yet a thing but oh yeah i don't have a deep fryer but i could do it in a dutch oven i do have a deep fryer but it's full of bacon grease and beef tallow so i'm not entirely Ooh. sure yum should i try <laughs> it yum <laughs> why would like, you yeah, yeah. I see Definitely. no problem with that especially yes. if you make your cannoli cream maple flavored yeah, I have like, like eight boxes like the of donuts. Yeah, I have like oh. eight boxes of maple flavoring because you never know when you might need maple flavoring. <laughs> Just it's welcome to Canada, right? <laughs> like it's my, it, it's like my. I'm channeling Janet. That's what it is. Yeah, I was gonna mm -hmm. say everything is maple. We have maple bacon here. Like it's a thing. <laughs> okay, so my answer: Do I always stay on plan? Mine actually would probably be a little bit different um yes because if i don't i will end up hospitalized mm -hmm. so for me it's not really a choice and when i went and i did my little carb experiment that was planned i i don't take the risk ever of going off of plan without considering it for like months ahead of time like the carb thing i literally cried over it for like two or three months because people were telling me i needed to try carbs including sally norton telling me i needed to try the carbs again and i i believed her i was like okay i gotta try it i, I have to try it to know so i i thought about it long and hard before i did it but for me it's not worth it to end up in that institute again because once you get out of there you don't go back mm -hmm. and so for me that my why in that aspect is strong enough for me to always stay on. And as much as I hate my past of where I came from, I'm so grateful for it because it actually makes it easier for me to stay on plan. <laughs> yeah. My, my why is, is super, super strong. Um, and it's not to say that, you know, I'm better than everybody else. I don't think I'm any better than anybody else. I think no, that, I totally heard you say that you're better than us. That's what I heard. Yeah, we get only, it. Only you, only you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that's, that's the worst, that, that's one of the worst things too. Comparing okay. yourself to others. You, we have to stop comparing ourselves to others. I cannot compare myself to Neely or Janet or to Lindsay or to no, anybody can. else out there. And you guys, I'm going to mute you. And you guys... <laughs> should not be comparing yourselves to us either yeah 
because there's so much more that goes on in our lives. I just was having a conversation with someone on YouTube the other day. I took Accutane when I was a teenager. That has been shown since then. They recall that it's been shown to actually alter your DNA and it's irreversible. I'm never going to get that back. So unless you took Accutane and you had the same antibiotics that I did when I was three for my ear infections and you had this infection in, you cannot compare yourself to somebody else. So that I think needs to be like the biggest takeaway of anything is don't compare yourself to others mm -hmm. ever. Compare yourself to you where you were to where you are now. And that is the only thing you should ever compare yourself to. Okay, I'm going to get off the soapbox now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Neely, you should be able to answer this very quickly. So hopefully you won't forget. <laughs> Favorite color? Uh, I should say indigo, but more of a blue green like teal. I really was ready for indigo. I wasn't ready for that. Okay. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Janet. Uh, green. Green. Oh, I'm so, I didn't know, Lindsay. I would have let you go first. Okay. Lindsay. And he's green as well. Ooh, Therefore, what color green? Janet picked the best coat. All? Did you know that the human eye can detect more shades of green than any other color in the spectrum? Did you Therefore, know that I knew there would be a scientific fact behind this? I was going to say, nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> I love my nerd. I'm wearing green, by the way, for both of you, apparently. Yeah. Okay. I love green. My favorite color changes. It depends on my mood. If I'm not in a good mood, then it's red. If I'm in a really good calm mood, then it's a blue color. If I am excited or happy about something, then it's green. Um, and then purple is kind of like, I don't know. Sometimes purple splashes in there once in a while. I am so fickle apparently that that's my <laughs> answer. Uh, not brown though, not, not brown, but I have a brown room. So it is what it is. Okay. Um, Lindsay, you get to go first. What's your favorite outfit? Oh, that's such a hard question. Uh, jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> jeans and a t-shirt. Always jeans, always a t-shirt. Jeans <laughs> and a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Neely, what about you? If it's summertime, yoga pants and a tank top. If it's colder, yoga pants, tank top, and a sweater. <laughs> Can I modify? In the summertime, it's shorts. <laughs> uh, no, my yoga pants. Oh, no. Calf. There we go. Oh. You're good. You're my good. yoga pants are calf length. Oh, oh okay. Oh, so like the capri. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I gotta have shorts with pockets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Janet. So lately it has been sweats and a hoodie and that would be like my winter time. And then in the summertime, um, last summer, anyways, I really liked the, um, like the spandex shorts with like an oversized t-shirt. That's usually my, my Just summer. Bring but it winter, back to 1993, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Am I princess Diana? <laughs> 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 oh my god no but definitely a hoodie like I pretty much wear hoodies every single day and in Canada we have like winter for like eight months so <laughs> you got a little bit of winter up there yeah yes you yeah do. it's it's snowing today so you know yeah I it was bright super sunny and the sun is like streaming in my windows and I look out and there's these giant flurries everywhere yeah we have snow on the ground and it is snowing like as we speak today and it's the middle of April. We don't get spring. We get spring for like two weeks in June and then it goes straight to summer. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about my Wisconsin winter anymore. No, you could live in, things could be worse. You could live in Canada. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the warning. <laughs> okay. So my favorite outfit is yoga pants and some kind of fancy-ish comfortable cotton shirt. Mm. T-shirts, I just, you know, I'm like, I, I, I don't super love t-shirts. Tank tops are definitely really not my thing. Um, yeah, tank tops are never my thing either. No. Yeah, hoodies, I love hoodies. Like if I'm not doing anything else, but I'm always doing something. I'm always in front of a Zoom camera. 
So now I always want to look nice. So I always have my earrings and my necklace. And I do have a bunch of sweaters laying all over the place that I will randomly throw on because I live in Wisconsin and it was 19 degrees earlier today. So, okay, y'all, I only have one more question on my list. Sorry, time's up, Lindsay, you lose. Time's up. No. <laughs> oh no, I have a timer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh if y'all have not found Lindsay before now you really need to go subscribe to Lindsay because I'm really not that entertained by myself please do not come with any ill-conceived notions that I'm this funny on my channel because I'm not <laughs> we bring out the best in you I mean you know what I feel but, like okay I feel like when we do this with all of us I feel like we're nothing like our channel like you know so disagreeing yeah, because you get to know more about us like personal personality wise rather than just, you know, doing a recipe and being in front of the camera and everything. I feel like doing this actually gets all of our personalities. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Last question. Janet, you get to go first. Oh. What is your favorite <laughs> sweet treat? Keto or non-keto? Like if you had your choice of whichever. Okay, that is a really good Wait, question. wait, wait. Trigger warning for those who get triggered by non-keto foods. Yeah. Thank you. Because yep. mine will <laughs> is definitely non-keto. Mine is definitely not in keto. Um, if I could have one sweet thing, you know, like today, my favorite would probably be a Dairy Queen Oreo Blizzard. Yeah. I remember I'm not those. really a pastry, you know, I think, and I'm not even a really ice cream, but you know what those DQ blizzards get me. So that would be mine. Okay. Neely, what about you? I'm going to keep this going here. <laughs> All right. Um, it would have to be a cheesecake and probably something that it contained chocolate. Mm. Okay. And Lindsay. Whichever one I have access to. I love the answer. She told me before she was like, whatever Although I have I will access say, to. In college, I worked in a donut shop, a Southern made donut shop. And oh my word, fresh, hot out of the oil, glazed donuts, just plain old donuts. Oh, clutch. So good. So, so good. Okay. So on that note, I have two answers. I have my okay. keto answer which is like, uh, honestly, whatever I made mm -hmm. <laughs> because I will, I, I can make whatever I want to have. So whatever I have made is probably exactly what I wanted right then. Mm -hmm. And my other answer is if I find out that I'm going to die in 30 minutes on my deathbed, I want a, a box of Krispy Kreme donuts and a venti white mocha with vanilla. Look at that face though. Oh my gosh. I love, I love white latte coffee. from Starbucks hot with whip. So that's my that death would bed. Probably kill you in 30 minutes. <laughs> exactly. That's why if I'm already dying, then that's what I'm going to eat. So yeah. my family already knows on my deathbed, whatever age I am, that they will feed me a Reese's peanut butter cup because I'm allergic to nuts. I have never had nuts in my life. And I just want to taste a Reese's peanut butter cup to see what the big hype is about. Have you taken that through probate yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I cannot believe we made it through all of them. And hopefully that was, I'm, I am oh, so impressed. Fine. Hopefully it was very entertaining for everybody out yeah. there it's in the YouTube's world. Um, we will do this again. I figure we will do this probably once a month in the middle of the month. So be looking out for it. Uh, next time, if you guys think of any other questions, feel free to put them down below in the comments and I will jot them down. I actually have a note in my phone that says fab four questions so I can update it for next time. Thank you so much guys. And we will see you all on the way. Hey. Okay. So can we pause for a second? Neely, I am seeing all of the plants in your background and hashtag a little bit jealous. What you got going on there? I cannot take credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upstairs in the upstairs bathroom, actually. We have a giant <laughs> we have a giant bathroom upstairs. 
because it used to be a bedroom and oh. they converted it to a bathroom to have a second bathroom in the house, which is wonderful. So yeah. it's yeah. enormous. The sink is just like right over here. And then the um, shower is right there. Oh my God. <laughs> this huge window that's amazing and my mom she's she has her room upstairs and so she keeps all of her pretty plants back here and yeah this is a christmas cactus i don't know i can't ruin anything but i love the christmas cactus looks like it's gonna bloom soon yeah at least the, the tips are beautiful. Beautiful. i don't know if that's what that means yeah i have my plants downstairs and honestly they're just happy to be alive <laughs> true y'all eight times today i have been called about my car's extended warranty oh gosh eight, eight times today. i'm sorry lindsay yeah. i didn't mean to can, you don't have to tell me baby i i know there's so much calls on my phone <laughs> airplane mode airplane yeah mode. but she's watching online right now to keep her busy because there's nobody else on airplane mode you can still do wi-fi bella come here Oh, can you come you here? Can I didn't think you could. I thought that just totally turns your phone off when you have it on. Let me see my phone real quick. Well, whenever oh, you're you on the airplane, turn off, you turn it off the data. You can turn off data and keep Wi-Fi on. Yes, that you can do. Well, whenever we're that. on the airplanes, you can turn off your, you know, you airplane mode it, and then you can still access Wi-Fi when you're on the airplane. Mine Wait, can we have Wi-Fi um, on an airplane? No, my. Let me see. <laughs> I haven't been, been so anywhere for a while. Yes. You're right. I turned on the airplane mode and it cut off my Wi-Fi. So I clicked the Wi-Fi again and it connected again. <gasps> what? Okay. Christmas. We should okay. actually probably do what we're here to do. <laughs> Which is record. <laughs> Why? I know. I was so looking forward to today. I'm like, I even forget that we're recording and posting this. I'm like, I just get to talk to my favorite three people. Like, it's so exciting. I love it. I look forward to it. See if we keep up with this and Lindsay, you're going to be able to make your like dramatic exit. So we'll be fine. Listen, I agree with Janet. I am my favorite. What thumbnail are we taking? We don't know where the conversation has gone, Amy. Yeah, I was just going to go with we're back. You know, we're back. Back, okay. back. All right. We just have, I actually thought about doing that where we all just did this. We're back. But, oh, darn. But then I have to take it. No, no, I can work. No, I can do that. Okay. I was like, did I have to take a screenshot? No, I don't. No, it's fine because I can just do it the way I always do it. Never knew existed. And what I really had to do, go in the other room. Oh my gosh. So much I was about to right stand now. up and clap. So much no, That's deep. I Bella. love that. What? Give me that and go back in the closet. Go back in the closet. I love you. So much strength, y'all. Right there. Shut the door. I love that child. My poor sick baby. And I it should work. Can I just, can I just for a second? Y'all were wiggling your fingers. So in the still shot, it's going to be all like wibbly. Is that oh, shoot. Your no. Hey, Neely, you got to do it again. We all need to freeze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, yeah, that's <laughs> how that works. Okay, hey, I'm sorry. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully that worked. Gosh. The things we go through for you people. I know. That is how I do the things all the time for my YouTube, like for my thumbnails. I have decided on a very specific aesthetic on the videos. And I will just sit there and scrub through the whole video trying to find like a the shot. one like, frame. That'll thing. work. But I'm like, why do my fingers move so fast? Why? Why does I my was gonna say move so fast? To find something where you're not moving in a video, Lindsay, for you especially, must be hard. It's impossible. I'm out. <laughs> a dramatic <laughs> exit has happened. <laughs> we, we can still see you in the mirror. Actually. My timer went off. <laughs> my timer went off. <laughs>